Gentlemen, thank you for coming. For a long time, we have been tormented by dark skin. But at last, our mobile suit capable of counteracting the jinn has been completed. Oh, my apologies. I'm so happy I can't help but be excited. My name is Maki. I came from Japan to introduce you to this amazing mobile suit. Now, let's reclaim our pure Asia world together. We will defeat every single space devil. This time, I will introduce this mobile suit from Gundam Seed. It is called the Strike Dagger. It is a mobile suit ray designed from the Strike Gundam as a mass-produced model. It's a powerful unit capable of significantly altering the military balance. Now, let's begin the lecture. The blade of counterattack held by Earth's warriors. How was the strike dagger developed? It was developed by the Atlantic Federation, a member of the massive organization called the Earth Alliance initially. The plan was to produce mass-produced mobile suits that inherited the functions of the strike on them as they were, however, the cost and production stability of the striker packs became an issue, and this plan was temporarily put on hold. The 105 Dagger, which was later produced as a formal mass-produced mobile suit, based on this initial plan. The Strike Dagger was designed for easy mass production by eliminating technology related to the Striker Pack. This method is also referred to as wartime design or simple mass production. However, the technological issues related to the Striker Pack weren't the only reasons. The Earth Alliance Army had very few means to counter Zaft Jin. They were barely avoiding defeat by sheer numerical superiority over Zaft. Therefore, it was necessary to deploy mobile suits to the Earth Alliance Army as soon as possible. There are multiple interpretations for why the name Strike Dagger was given in the official spin-off Comics Astray series. It is explained this way the name of Strike the only mobile suit in the GTX series that wasn't captured by the enemy was given to give hope to the soldiers. The Strike Gundam under Kira Yamato's control survived against South Ace pilots and defeated commanders like Andrew Waldfeld and Marco Mohosin, who were threats to the Earth Alliance. In the project centered on the plastic model product called Gundam Seed MSB, it is explained this way the name of the mobile suit designed in the initial plan was Dagger, and the name of the mobile suit designed in the modified plan was also Dagger. The name Strike Dagger was given to distinguish these two types of mobile suits. Both are very convincing explanations. The development was conducted at the Earth Alliance's Panama base, aiming to drastically reduce production costs. Decisions such as the abolition of phase shift armor and the omission of striker frogs were made. Although the design was simplified, the same X100 series frame as the strike is used for the basic skeleton, this frame allows for flexible movement similar to the human body. As a result, it maintained performance equivalent to the initial GATX 100 series in terms of mobility, greatly surpassing the flexibility of the gym, which was developed from a construction machine. The software for natural pilots was also completed. Influences include data provided by the Archangel to the Alaska base the cooperation of coordinators in the Earth Alliance, and the acquisition of data from software developed for naturals in all. In fact, there are different interpretations about the software depending on the source. It is said that the company in Detroit, a city within the Atlantic Federation, had nearly completed it through independent improvements. It is also said that when the Archangel provided data at the Alaska base, 
It was on the verge of implementation. This software was a revolutionary one that enabled Nautilus to control mobile suits. However, there were drawbacks. There was a tendency for movements to be patterned. In the novel version, it is pointed out that it is difficult to respond to irregular movements. Here, you know to said you can discern the movements of a mobile suit with natural software by observing them. Even so, combined with the Earth Alliance's overwhelming financial power and material resources, it became an amazing new weapon. As a minor change, the console for adjusting software installed in the GTX series has been abolished. This part was introduced to smooth the adjustment of prototypes, so it was unnecessary for officially mass-produced units. Only people with abilities like Kira could effectively use it in the middle of actual combat, it's regrettable. But the GATX series was stolen by Zaft because it had an adjustment console. From a security defense perspective, abolition was the natural choice. Let's go over the equipment of the Strike Data. First, we have the 70 Finsman Anti-Aircraft Automatic Vulcan Gun Turret System Eagle Stolen. This is the same type of interception weapon as the GATX series to expedite mass production. This weapon is only equipped on the left side of the head. It has become possible to install it for half the cost. This is an important change for the Earth Union Army, which is producing thousands of units. However, it's not just about cost reduction. This relates to the points we discussed in the GATX series review program. There were several cases where the weapons equipped on the X series adopted existing weapons to ensure their reliability as weapons. This anti-aircraft automatic Vulcan gun system is one of them. The head of the strike dagger has a design different from the X series. If you place high precision sensors and cameras in the optimal arrangement, you will have a head design like the X series. However, in the strike dagger, the structure is simplified for mass production. This has created room to incorporate other parts into the space in the head. Therefore, this head Vulcan gun has an increased number of bullets loaded compared to the X series. Then, there's the revolutionary melee weapon. Its name is the ESC-01 Beam Saber. It's a familiar weapon for us viewers because it's the weapon that the Gundams always used. However, it's the first time in human history that it's been installed on a mass-produced mobile suit. Its performance is the same as that of the X-Series. It was successfully mass-produced without reducing its performance. The original plan was to equip two beam sabers. To facilitate mass production, the number of sabers equipped was reduced to one. Also, the 105 dagger has a beam saber installed at the waist because it equips a striker pack. The strike dagger has it installed on its back side because it has abolished the striker pack. Depending on the material, it is sometimes explained that the data from when the duo Gunnam was designed is refracted. There is a hidden episode with this beam saber. This is a story in the real world. Kuni Ookawaro was in charge of designing the strike dagger. He is a veteran staff member. He also designed the GM that appeared in the original Gundam. Mr. Okawara has expressed regrets about the location of the GM's beam saber. There were voices from fans saying that it's a difficult position to take the beam saber with the right hand. From those reflections, the beam saber was installed on the right side of the strike dagger. What do you all think? I don't think the location of the GM is strange. If you equip the beam saber with your right hand, you have to let go of the weapon in your right hand. You will lose a means to attack a distant enemy on the battlefield. There are many times when you can't afford to pick up a dropped weapon. 
What happens if it is equipped in the left hand? You have to let go of the shield. But you'll be able to keep the rifle for attacking distant enemies. Being able to keep a means of attack is a big advantage. Another reason is that the arm holding the weapon is often a priority target for enemy attacks. If your right hand is attacked, it is difficult to immediately counterattack using your right hand. There is footage that confirms these points. It's a movie of the original Gundam. A GM appears that was attacked in the right shoulder. By a dance bazooka, he loses the function of his right arm and lets go of the beam spray gun. However, he immediately releases the shield and uses the beam saber to defeat the dom. The effectiveness of arranging the beam saber on the same side as the arm protected by the shield can be confirmed. But it is also a fact that it raised questions for viewers. I think the arrangement of the beam saber implemented in the strike data is good. I also think it's an advantage to be able to fight while equipped with a shield. How do you feel? Let's return to the discussion of the strike data's equipment. Next up is the M70357 man beam rifle. This is the first beam rifle for mass produced units. It's a modified version of the Duo's beam rifle. Surprisingly, it has the power to destroy a Zin in one shot. We've witnessed the Stry Gundam defeat many Zins, so this may not seem too shocking. But for us Alliance soldiers, this is a truly amazing weapon. Some of you may wonder but the Zin also has beam weapons. That's correct. The Zin does appear armed with beam weapons. More surprisingly, it first appears with these during the initial battle at Heliopolis. The beam cannon is called a Balaos. However, despite its large size, its power is not particularly high. Of course, it has enough firepower to attack older weapons. But it is easily blocked by the small shield of the Sword Strike Gunnam. Compared to the compact beam rifle, it becomes an inferior weapon. The anti-beam shield is also an important piece of equipment. It is widely used on dagger-type mobile suits with an emphasis on defending against beam attacks. This is related to the fact that the day before the beam rifle was stolen by Zaft, along with the leak of the GATX series. Indeed, the beam rifle was installed as standard equipment on the gates, Zaft's next main mass produced mobile suit. The shield uses any beam that comes into contact with it as a power source and creates a mirror surface at the molecular level to block attacks. Despite its plain appearance, it has a very complex function. However, it cannot block powerful beam weapons with high energy. In the Battle of Dope, it was completely destroyed by the beam cannons of the Perfect Strike Gunnam and the Buster Gunnam, Shield and Dole. The shield's curved shape is also designed to defend against physical weapons. This is influenced by the decision to abandon face shift armor in mass production. And there's a hidden story about this shield. It was originally designed as an initial proposal for the Stry Gunnam's shield. The cooler version of this shield is what the Stry Gunnam and Duo Gunnam are equipped with. Finally, there's the Parachute Pack. This is a backpack equipped on the rear attachment, which was used during the Operation of Liberation. It allows for high altitude drop operations. The Orb Forces, which were allocating forces to intercept the naval forces, were unable to cope with the strike dagger landings using parachute drops. 
While it is a powerful piece of equipment considering the overall operation, it has the downside of not being able to be equipped unless the beam saber is removed. Compared to the main Gundam units, the strike dagger may seem plain, but it's an incredibly powerful mobile suit. The fact that a large number of these units were produced and equipped with the latest beam weapons is truly a game changer in the history of human warfare. War is not just about having a single powerful weapon or soldier. In the Gundam Seed novel, Admiral Hoboroden told Kira Yamato this. War is not something you can win just because you exist. Don't overestimate your abilities. From a military perspective, it wouldn't be wrong to call the strike dagger the most powerful weapon due to its capabilities. Let's talk about the exploits of the strike dagger. They fought against creatures from space for the sake of a pure Azure world. The strike dagger first appears in the Panama-based defense battle of the Earth Alliance Army. A beam rifle suddenly destroys the Zaft Gym mobile suit, which was systematically annihilating outdated weapons in front of the stunned Zaft soldiers. A large number of strike daggers emerge. But their strength is not only in their powerful beam weapons, the Earth Alliance soldiers who have little experience in mobile suit combat compensate for this weakness through strategic maneuvering. They use tactics that involve attacking a single enemy with multiple units. From an audience perspective, this may seem like a cowardly approach, but in military combat, achieving victory is the ultimate goal. This tactic proved to be very effective, slowly changing the tide of the battle. However, the Zaft army activates a weapon called Gungir. This weapon generates powerful electromagnetic pulses that destroy electronic equipment. Its Zaft strong card, manufactured using specialized parts that can only be produced in space. The Zaft gene units anticipated the use of Gungir and thus had EMP protection installed in their machines. However, in the rush to mass-produce the strike daggers, the EMP protection was inadequately implemented. This occurrence was a stroke of small fortune for the Zaft army. The strike daggers their electronic systems destroyed were mercilessly crushed by the attacking Jin units. Here again, there is a hidden episode, the name of the strike dagger unit, that deployed at the Panama base is the 13th independent unit. This is the same name as that of the ship, the white base, to which Emma Oway, the protagonist of the original Gundam series, belongs Gundam Seed used many elements from the original Gundam to advance its storyline. A civilian boy balls a Gundam during a colony under enemy attack. The Gundam makes an atmospheric ray entry on its own. There are exchanges with formidable enemies in the desert, who are later defeated. There are battles with formidable foes at sea. A variety of homages are scattered throughout the story then. The Archangel leaves the Earth Alliance army. This is a development different from the original Gunnam. And finally, a unit by the name of the 13th Independent Unit appears. In the original Gunnam, it referred to a small, elite unit that the protagonists belong to in Gunnam Seed. It is the name of a unit that deploys mass production mobile suits. The audience foresaw that the Gundam Seed story would take a unique direction by featuring a unit with a significantly different role. The Strike Dagger continues to perform on various battlefields afterward. It serves as a fantastic supporting role to enhance the story. After the end of the battles in Gundam Seed, it passes the baton to the former mass produced 105 Dagger. Has the Strike Dagger's role ended here? Surprisingly, it hasn't. You can see them in the final decisive battle in the sequel Gundam Sea Destiny. They can be seen in Lost Crimes Unit, 
Try comparing its color with the darker arrow in the lower left corner. Also check the color of the shields on the darker arrow and 105 dagger. Although we cannot determine the position of the beam saber, there's a high possibility that this machine is a strike dagger. This is truly surprising. Here are your mod to for the fierce battle against Doku and Gulf in the strike rules. The machine that appears in this scene is the strike dagger. Do you understand the significance? First, its performance is lower compared to the strike gunman. Moreover, it doesn't support strike attacks. The astonishing information doesn't stop there. The fact that it exists alongside the Archangel, Kusono G, and the Katsuki is astounding. It fought on the front lines of the largest war that occurred in Sea Destiny. Although its detailed status is unknown, it appears almost unscathed. It hasn't lost its weapon either. Could it be piloted by an extraordinarily skilled pilot? Or is it the presence that temporarily took to the battlefield due to an accident? Like Hathaway nowhere in Mobile Suit Gundam Shao's counterattack a new story, maybe born from this single strike, that are appearing here. The above concludes the commentary on the strike dagger. Its many active scenes in its first appearance are indeed fresh. The impression of GM being defeated by Shao in the original Gunnam is still striking. The strike dagger phase away after the battles of Gunnam Sea, it was upgraded to the mass-produced mobile suit, the 105 dagger, which can use striker packs. And in Gundam Sea Destiny, the models were further upgraded to advanced types such as Dagger L and Venom. In contrast, Daft continues to use outdated mobile suits like Din Din and Goon in the era of Sea Destiny. It must be influenced by the economic power and quantity of the Earth Alliance. An incredibly large organization, the Strike Dagger has a fantastic design that clearly shows its role as a mass-produced unit actually. There is a Gundam-like camera behind the Gundam-like camera. An easy to understand scene is the launching scene of Dagger L, its successor, appearing in Gundam Sea Destiny. Which aspects of the Strike Dagger do you like? Personally, I find the part about it being a temporary production machine that does not support strike attacks pretty cool. The story born from the situation we need to assemble as many as possible pronto is incredibly charming, isn't it? Please let me know in the comments about your favorite aspects. I have important information for you in fact. The Zaft forces are approaching your house, but rest assured by pressing the subscribe button you can activate the strike dagger hidden in your basement. Use the like button to unlock the hatch and the bell button to ignite the main engine. Everyone in your neighborhood is also activating their strike daggers. Please launch an attack on Zaft then with multiple strike daggers. May fortune favor you in battle until we meet again on the next show.